reactions. So here, if I take a generic reaction, A going to B, uh, saying that it's zero order means that the sum of the exponents in my rate law expression must be equal to zero. So if I look at the rate law expression for this uh, reaction, rate would be equal to K times the concentration of my reactants raised to the zeroth power. So anything raised to the zeroth power becomes one. So really we're saying that rate is equal to K and that's equal to a constant. So that's quite a bit different than first and second order reactions because that was a big problem for us if you wanted to find the concentration of your reactant at some time t for first and second order reactions you had to look at the integrated rate law. And that was because as the reaction was going along the concentration of the reactant was decreasing and our rate was decreasing the whole time. So things are a little bit different with zero order reactions because the rate is constant. So that means we're not going to have to look at an integrated zero order reaction. We can use a basic equation for this. We don't have to involve calculus. So when we look at this, the units on K here, remember units for K are related to the overall reaction order. So the units on K for zero order reaction are molar per second, which is the same as rate. And when we look at this, we see what we were talking about, the rate being constant. So if we look at a graph of the concentration versus time for a zero order reaction, it's actually a straight line. For sec first and second order reactions, this was a curved line, and then we had to use calculus to straighten it out. We don't have that problem. The change in concentration and time is linear, so that means we don't have to uh, do anything to the uh, base equation. So the equation turns out uh, being once again, a relationship between initial and final concentration involving K and our time in T. And if we look at a kind of a sample question here, just like with first and second order reactions, it's all about you know knowing you're dealing with a zero order reaction and making sure that you're using the um, <clears throat> putting the concentrations in the right place, making sure your units are all correct. So if I have this base equation, I tell you what the K is, I know it's zero order because the, the units in this case are, I have to give you um, some other information about that. Remember, you cannot look at the, the reaction and come up with the overall order. I need to get some different information for that. And then all I have to do is say, um, what's my initial? So that's uh, 0.1 molar goes there. My final is uh, what we're calculating and then we are saying 160 seconds and so K was given right here I plug this in and uh, kind of the tricky bit um, I um, that you, you can see here is you got to remember this is a negative sign so you do this multiplication you take the negative of it then you add your initial concentration to it and just like what we were talking about that you always want to apply uh, chemical logic if you can do this so during a reaction uh, the concentration of reactants is going to go down. So if my initial concentration is 0.1 molar, my final concentration needs to be something less than that. So here, um, my final concentration or concentration at time t is 0.02 molar, so that's smaller than 0.1 molar, so this answer looks good.